Hello everybody. I just received a radio report for an enemy convoy and I want to use this opportunity to show you a really easy and simple method to plot an intercept course. So I already asked my navigator over here to calculate our current position. Let's have a look at the map. So our current position is right there. And the first thing that we want to do is to mark the enemy's position. Let us have a quick look at the radio message that we received. So this is it. It reads, radio report received, enemy large convoy, longitude 20 degrees 11 minutes west, latitude 53 degrees 21 minutes north, on a course of west-south-west with a speed of 8 knots. Range 294 kilometers, bearing minus 49, scope bearing 311, true bearing 186. So this tells us there is a large convoy at this position going on a course of west-southwest with a speed of 8 knots. The range is of course our range to the contact bearing minus 49 degrees. Um, this is basically how we would have to steer to head directly for the position of the contact. Um, this is not accurate anymore since I was just turning as the radio message came in. So minus 49 would mean I would have to steer 49 degrees to port to head directly for the convoy at the moment where I received the radio message. Scope bearing 311 degrees, that means if I was to look through one of the scopes I would have to point it at 311 degrees to look directly into the direction of the contact. True bearing 186, that is the true bearing, the true compass bearing on the map to our contact. Uh, really important for us is only the first part of the message. So, marking the enemy's position. Now, the enemy's position was given as 20 degrees 11 minutes west, 53 degrees 21 minutes north. So, if we have a look at the latitude and longitude markings. Up here are the longitude markings, so 20 degrees west is in this column here, and 53 degrees north is in this column here. So, our contact is somewhere in this grid square right here. Let me zoom in on that. So it's somewhere in here, but where exactly? I open the map tools and this little nautical latitude longitude chart. I place it in the corner here, drag it out like this. Do a little bit of fine adjustment to really get the corners perfect. Oh, well, that's nice enough. And then I use a little trick, because I cannot place a marker directly inside here while the tool is active. Um, I use the ruler, and I go to 20 degrees 11 minutes west, so this is 20 degrees 0 minutes west, this is 20 degrees 10 minutes west, 20 degrees 20 minutes west, so 21 is about there-ish, and I simply draw a line along this longitude. Then I do the same with 53 degrees 21 minutes north, so 10, 20, 21. Uh, excuse me, I just realized the first, uh, the longitude was 20 degrees 11 minutes west, not 21. So I have to draw the line here. Yep, you have to be careful when doing those things. Let me delete this one. So there we go, now it's correct. Now I know that our contact is right there. Let me zoom in on that. And I draw a line into the enemy's direction of travel. So they are going west-south-west. So this here would be west, this here would of course be south, but that would be southwest, and west-southwest is this here. Let me draw our 
a nice and long line like that. That's okay. Now I can go ahead and delete these two lines that I used to pinpoint the enemy's position. I don't need them anymore. The next thing I want to do is to draw a line from the enemy's position to my own position. So I am up here. There we go. Now it looks like this. And we can see that the range 294 kilometers was not far off from the mark. That's great. Just to verify what we see. By the way, let me just uh, say something about the message that we received, why we received it, and how that happens. So, maybe you sometimes were sailing close to England, and you sent out a status report, a radio transmission, and a few hours later you are suddenly attacked by aircraft. How did they find you? Well, one possibility is that the British intercepted your radio transmission and used radio direction finders to pinpoint your position. It works basically like this. So let's say that you were out here in the ocean, you sent out a radio transmission and there is a listening station in England here with a radio direction finder and they can tell that your radio transmission came from this direction. And there's another listening station here and they can tell that your direction came from this, uh, that your transmission, excuse me, came from this direction. So they can quite easily pinpoint your position. Now the same thing can happen to British convoys. They travel along their route across the Atlantic and they send out radio transmissions from time to time. And if a convoy sends out a radio transmission, it's get, it, get, um, excuse me, it gets picked up on the mainland by listening stations here and there, then they can triangulate the position. Now if the convoy is doing regular transmissions, then the listening stations can also tell the course of the convoy and their speed and they can communicate this to U-boats on the Atlantic so that we can go ahead and hunt those convoys. So that is how that works. This number here, you can change that. This is now set to 600 kilometers. It basically means that I will only receive contact reports no more than 600 kilometers away from my boat. The closer I get to England, the more I lower this number, because it gets less useful. Especially if you are close to England, there's no use in getting radio reports from the other side of the British Isles. Out in the Atlantic, I leave it at a default setting of 800. But right now I'm using 6 for this quadrant here. So now let us get back to plotting our intercept course. So we drew a line from the target's position into uh, in their direction of travel and we drew a line between their position and our position. Now I want to go ahead and draw a line or basically measure off a distance from their position off into their direction of travel. And the distance that I measure off has to be representative of their speed. So they are going at a speed of 8 knots. That means I could draw a line that is 8 kilometers long. That would be a bit short for our plotting purposes. I can draw a line that is 80 kilometers long. Or I can draw a line that is 800 kilometers long. Now 800 kilometers long, that would be a bit impractical. Usually, usually 80 is absolutely fine, so always times 10. So 80 for 8 knots. It's right there. And from this point here, I want to draw a circle that has a radius that is representative of our speed. And now I have to think about the speed that I want to travel at to intercept this convoy. Now, 
I know they are going away from me and I know that there is quite some distance in between us. So I will want to go at a high speed. I will want to go at head full, so that means 16 knots. If a convoy was coming directly towards me, then I could go slower, for example, let's say 10 knots or 12 or something like that. Um, you don't quite want to go at flank speed. That would be a choice that some people would immediately think of, but going at flank speed just burns so much fuel, it's uh, not really worth it. So going ahead full is perfectly fine in most cases. So that would be a speed of 60 knots. So we draw this circle and we have to use the same ratio that we used for the enemy speed. So for their speed of 8 knots I used 80 kilometers. So for my speed of 60 knots I need to use 160 kilometers. So let me do that really quick. There we go. So this circle now has a radius of 160 kilometers. We need to pay special attention to where this circle intersects the line from our boat to the enemy contact. Let me put a marker right there. There's a mark. Let me zoom in to place it on the line. So, like that. And now comes the amazing part. I take a protractor tool and I go to the center of the circle that we just made and from the center of the circle I draw out the first leg of the protractor to the mark we just placed and the second leg I draw out to the enemy's position that gives us a degree between those two legs of 26 degrees. That is in fact by how far we have to lead our target to intercept it. We have to lead it by 26 degrees. So if I go to the enemy's position and I draw a protractor leg to my own position and place the second leg so that you can't read it because of the navigation marks but it says 26 degrees right now right there and I place that then I know that it, I will intercept the target at this position right here if I go on this course that's already it. It's really easy and simple and it will finally allow you to make really good use of those radio reports that you receive. Now, one more thing though. I actually do not want to intercept them at this point because I would be coming up from behind. I would have to play catch up with them. I would have to overtake them, etc, etc. Why would I want to do that? I can simply do the following. I extend this a little bit to let's say 29 degrees or even yeah 29 should be fine 29 degrees and now I won't intercept them here I will be waiting for them here and I will be able to place myself in an advantageous position for the attack and just a second, so what course was this? This is on a course of 215 degrees. So let me turn directly onto that course. Neuer Kurs, 2, 1, 5 Grad. So now our boat is turning. We have completed the turn. We will go to a head full. Volle Fahrt voraus. And now we have to wait. Um, let me just put a little disclaimer right here. So, even if you do everything correctly, there's still the possibility that you will not find this convoy. Why does that happen? 
so the convoy while it is traveling across the Atlantic. At some points it will change its course or its speed. So if they suddenly decide to go faster than 8 knots, for example if they decide to go at 12 knots, I will not intercept them here. They will be long gone when I reach this point. If they change their course to a course that is more southerly or northwesterly, there's no way that I will find them. And another big issue is that, let me just put this here, the course that we were given of west-southwest, well, you see, west-southwest, it could basically be anything from about here to about there. That could everything be considered as a west-southwest course. And you immediately see the problem. While we expect to intercept them here, they might actually be up here or down there. And we will be missing them because there is quite a lot of room for them to slip by, as you see. So don't worry if you do everything correctly and you still don't find the convoy. It just happens. You have to keep hunting and wait for the next opportunity. Now the last thing that I want to do before we increase uh, our time compression and see if we will actually find this convoy is I want to measure off how far I have to go on this course until I intercept them. So this is 480 kilometers. I will go to the speed conversion tables, there they are, and I will look at how long I have to travel for 480 kilometers. So I see that in 10 hours I will do almost 300 kilometers, so that is another 180 kilometers missing. I see that in 6 hours I would do almost 180 kilometers. And in fact, I'm going a bit slower than 16 knots because of the weather. So let me say that I will need about, yeah, let's say 17 hours to reach the position. Yeah, about 17 hours should do it. And maybe if the weather improves and I can be on a constant speed of 16 knots. Maybe it doesn't, we'll see. But still I might, I might actually want to increase my lead angle a bit, but now nah, let's just go with it, that's fine. So I set 17 hours, I will bring up my clock and if you click on the right side of the clock here, a little menu opens and you can set an alarm. So I will set this for 17 hours. There. Enable it and we will certainly be notified when that time has passed. So time compression on. Let's just wait a bit while our navigation marks tick down this line. to do something. How charming. So, uh, I can see that we have sped up considerably. That's nice. And we are almost in position. Let me in fact just tell my navigator to calculate our current position. 
open again. There we are. Okay, I think that's... How far away are we from our projected line? 30 kilometers, that's nice. It's the middle of the night. So uh, there's no chance in hell that... chance that our bridge could spot anything. So what we will do is we will dive. Oh. Diesel machine stop. Auf e machine umschalten. Haupt Ballasttank fluten. Untertriebszelle fluten. Bugtiefenruder 8. Rad unten. Achterer Tiefenruder. Zwei. Rad oben. Tiefe beträgt 1, 0 Meter. Neuer Kontakt, Frachter mit oh, langsamer Fahrt. Go. Näher kommend. Peilung 2, 4, 9. In großer Entfernung. Dieselmaschinen stopp. Tiefe beträgt 2, 0 Meter. Tiefe beträgt 3, 0 Meter. Kleine Fahrt voraus. Neue Tiefe 3, 1 Meter. So, we have a Grad oben. Maschinen stopp! Just to recap really quick how to calculate an intercept course, basically you need your own position, you need the enemy's position, you draw a line from your position to their position, you draw a line for their course that they will travel, then you measure off a distance on that line that is representative of their speed, and then you draw a circle that is representative of your speed, and then you draw a protractor leg from the center of the circle to where this circle intersects the line between uh, your position and theirs and you draw the second leg to their position that gives you your lead angle and that's it basically really simple really easy really fast to do now, the next video I will attempt to explain something that is a lot more complex and it has to do with basically hunting a convoy like the one we can just hear on the hydrophones by using the forbearing method. So you can look forward to that and I thank you very much for paying attention and for hopefully enjoying this video. You can also have a look at my other video on Silent Hunter where I explain how to use the IOBF tool and the attack disc. And I will hopefully see you again soon. Goodbye.